mostly I want to, again, thank everyone who contributed to Django in, in, in any way over these past 18 months, um, people who filed bugs, people who helped out on, on the mailing list, and especially people who contributed code. So thanks a lot, guys. So Adrian or I can take questions at the microphones. Hi. Hello. OK, there we go. Um, this is a question that's coming actually from uh, IRC, from a guy named Ram Garlic in, uh, in Brazil. And he was asking uh, what, what frameworks have influenced uh, Django, uh, both in terms of positive features and then warts to avoid. For me, um, I, I mean, I love, I love geeking out with random tools. So I've, I've used most of the, I've used all the other Python web frameworks. I've used, I've used Rails, I've used Seaside, I used web objects way back in the day. And I, I you know, I, don't, I think you can't, you can't use something without picking up, picking up things from it. Um, certainly the sort of, uh, that initial learning curve that Rails has where you, you download it and you type a couple things and bam, you've got a site. Like that's, I think that's really important. You get that instant feedback of whether or not you're gonna like this tool and you can, you can go through the whole tutorial in like an hour and figure out whether you think you should you know, learn more about it. I think, that, I think that that definitely influenced our thinking quite a bit. Um, uh, okay, thanks. Yeah. So, something of a uh, I'd like a pony request, um, as far as... Not as, yours. Yeah. <laughs> so, as, as long as we're talking about the future of Django later on and, and where we've been, some of these new features, and especially things like file storage, I have seen people clamoring for as being usable standalone, like the, the fact that Marty wrote an abstraction over any kind of file storage you want to use would be incredibly useful outside the context of web frameworks. Um, what are the thoughts there? I would, we've got those. I'd like to encourage people to create Google, uh, Google code projects or you know, host it wherever you want. Um, I don't know if we'd want to get in the business of providing and main, most of all maintaining different versions given that we in many, many places assume you know, that Django.utils, uh, which, which is where we put all utilities for some <laughs> definition of utilities. So when I originally started doing new forms, that was one of my design goals was, yeah, we'll have it as a downloadable form library. And then you know, it's like, oh, and then you got to put in all the internationalization hooks. So then you know, how do you deal with that? So my, my thoughts just personally are, no, nothing against it, please. I mean, we're licensed BSD, so if you want to take a part of us and, and put it on, you know, a, as a standalone project, please do that. I don't know if we would want to get into that maintenance. Uh, I'll also point out that um, uh, it's very easy to use Django without using all of it. I mean, Guido was just talking earlier today about taking, to run Django in App Engine, you basically take Django and like delete a whole bunch of stuff. That there's, there's no reason why you, you can't, if you really like new forms and you don't want the rest of it, there's no reason I, that I can think of why you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't have you know, just Django on your disk and just not use the parts that you don't want to use. I mean, it's, there's nothing that says, hey, if you, if you really like our um, you know, Django utils and coding, which is all the stuff that handles string and Unicode and converting between them, there's nothing that says, you know, if you use that, you have to use our template language too. I mean, there's, um, you know, in general, Django is pretty well built from sort of bottom up architecturally, so you can use a lower level bit and it won't depend on the stuff above it. And if it does, by the way, that, I mean, that's a bug. We were talking yesterday about whether um, Django contrib should really be completely optional. Like what happens if you delete Django contrib from your, from your, um, from your disk? And right now what happens is that um, a couple small parts of Django crash. And, and that shouldn't happen. I mean, that's a, that's a bug. So if, if things aren't arch arch architected correctly for you to be able to do those sorts of things, like, tell us. Hi. Um, I've, I've been using Django since Core Center Factor mostly. Um, 
And I know that this question should probably be asking the IRC channel, but since I'm here, hey. Um, uh, because I've been following Course Interfactor, I basically check out Subversion. And for a while, buildbot.djangoproject.com has been all green, but lately, um, it hasn't been all green. Um, is it a good way to see, hmm, is the current revision good or not? Or do you have we, comments? Um, we have a badly written test. It's actually just one. One of the file storage tests has a race condition with other instances of that test being run uh, approximately at the same time. And so they lock up the build bot and it all fails. So the, uh, the build bots need help. If you're, if you're a, a build bot person and you know about build bot or want to learn and help us out, like that's one of the places we really need, um, we really need a lot of help. Thank you. Um, so there's a lot of us here. And there's a lot more people that, that wanted to be here and, and for whatever reasons of geography or numbers greater than 200 couldn't. Um, and we write a lot of software. And we write a lot of software using Django. And everybody's clamoring to try to get things to either be contrib or to at least be kind of blessed thumbs up. Are there any plans among the, the core contributors to sort of um, focus this uh, uh, sort of community effort in the same way that maybe a difference between in Ubuntu land universe and multiverse, the things that aren't part of Django, but everybody just kind of assumes are the things that you're going to be including, such as, um, uh, well, I'm trying to think of some uh, tagging, Django tagging. Everybody uses Django tagging, but it's not part of Django. Um, and for a while, we had a big, long wiki page of all the different applications that everybody wrote, and it was sort of disorganized and didn't necessarily always help. Are there going to be any sort of these community focusing efforts? So yesterday, the committers had a meeting for several hours, and this is one of the things we talked about. Uh, one of the things that is forthcoming from Jacob on Django developers is a sort of policy about what is Django contrib and what are its goals. Uh, and that is, what was our, wait, wait, just wait for it on, on the mailing list. <laughs> Optional de facto implementations of common, implementations of common patterns. Uh, so, for stuff like that, like where where like a, a database backend like Postgres, you know, there there shouldn't be three different implementations on you know sitting on the internet. We should pick one and roll it, and just like the Python standard library. Uh, same thing with, uh, frankly, database migrations. I hope that things get worked out there and we get a standard thing, a standard approach. We use this. I was just going to say the, the other important thing that we talked about yesterday was that um, you don't want to do it too early. So we've got these three, um, a couple, four, actually five now that I can think of um, schema migration tools for Django. That there may be more. Um, none of them are particularly mature and they all have their ups and downs. And if we right now said we're going to bless this one, we kind of cut off innovation on the rest of them. I mean, we wouldn't be preventing anyone from, from working on it, but we would, you know, we have a fair amount of power simply by, you know, blessing something, as you say. And so there needs to be sort of a, a level where we feel like it's, it's the right way to do it, at least, as, at least as, as far as we're concerned. And so for a lot of, a lot of these third-party things out there, um, it's not clear whether they've reached that point. So there's a, there's, a, there's a bit of a question about it, and I think we're going to try to come up with more of a um, semi-formal policy, as, as formal as we get, I think, um, on how that process was work, on how things get in and, and, and what things don't. Can I add a part and, B? Uh, uh, so, I was going to address the other part of your question, which I think was, correct me if I'm wrong, do we intend to create like an app repository or just some place where people can say, I made this thing? Maybe you weren't asking that. Uh, I would like to do that frankly, and there's a Django hot club, not, not the cookie, but the actual hot club. I don't know what Django the status is. Django pluggables. Personally, I like to make that a priority. Okay. But a, a part B request of that um, would be to, to add to whatever this uh, criterion for blessing would be a sort of uh, best practices for application packaging. Um, if, if only because some of the, the larger and really awesome applications out there are designed in such a way that they don't 
they aren't really designed to play well with other applications. So, so I think you need to go to um, James Bennett's talk on reusable applications. I think uh, that sounds great. I'll <laughs> which be is uh, two twenty-five this afternoon. Okay. I'll also point out that, like Adrian said, I'm going to be writing up a, a, a sort of a policy and posting it on Django Dev soon. Like everything that we do, this is not. We, we only rule by fiat when absolutely necessary, um, and even then really reluctantly. So if, you know, watch for this draft policy, and if you think we got it wrong, tell us, and, and we'll, we'll do what we can to change it, you know? Thank you. Look forward to it. So I think we have time for one last quick question, and um, then we'll be splitting the chat. <coughs> you said that after query re uh, refactor, you, we can use non-relation databases as well. How about mixing? So we could get stuff like users directly for, from LDAP. Right, right now Django only supports one database at one time. Um, one of the things that um, Malcolm snuck in to the query set refactor work when nobody was looking was sort of the really low level plumbing for multiple databases simultaneously. Um, like I said, it's the very low level stuff and it's not exposed publicly and you have to you have to read the code. There's no documentation because it's not stable and it's not final. But we're sort of we've laid the ground the groundwork for supporting multiple databases at once. And once that's exposed, in um, often that's the easy part: writing the low-level code and then writing a public API that's obvious and easy to use is the difficult part. Once we've done that, it'll be you'll be able to use multiple databases simultaneously, and one of them could be non-relational, uh, assuming that you know a non-relational database backend exists. Well, um, thank you very much, Adrian and Jacob.